take a quick look. Should be starting off. Hopefully, yeah, I'm, I'm smart enough to mute it. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, looks like we're live. Perfect. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. I'm Lauren from The Break Zone. And uh, here we are with uh, Lightning. I believe that's the element that's after Earth in terms of uh, serial numbers, 4 plus 7. And starting off, oh, wait, let's make it look a little bit better. You don't need to see the recording program there. Um, Red Mage. All right, so uh, Red Mage is kind of cool. Uh, the fact that you could be you're able to break it to a, a break a forward of cost four or less is pretty nice. Uh, keep in mind that you're probably playing a lightning water, so that you can get the full effect out of it if you are playing it. But um, bounce effects have not been as uh, popular as of late because even if you, um, I guess you could say it's a bit of a tempo play where you don't permanently remove the the problem that's in front of you, which would be a forward in this case, but you're able to um, get it out of the way temporarily. And uh, this one also is quite restrictive in terms of uh, cost three or less that open controls. Like uh, if they play a four cost, this is not gonna help. You return to their hand and there's just so many forwards right now that, are, that have entered the field effect that you might actually uh, hurt yourself by allowing them to trigger it again. I don't really like this card personally, but if you're make, able to make it work, that's great. Uh, also, it's a category five um, forward. So there's a whole lot of category five in this set and that's just another one of them, okay? All right, next up, RG. So uh, this two drop backup is always nice, but um, in this case, you wanna be able to break uh, this card. So there's, there's a few ways you can break your own backups. I mean, one of them being, uh, well, the new Lulu in this set. In this case, you'd be playing uh, Lightning Fire. There's also uh, the original Heroic Lulu, one of uh, Thomas and Dan Nguyen's favorite cards from the <laughs> Minute Pushing Boys. Uh, yeah, great card with a little bit of other thing. And uh, there's, well, I haven't seen him in a while, but there's also three drop Delita that's able to uh, choose a character you control to break it. So if you're able to break it, you get some cool effects, but that also means that um, unless the break effect gives you an extra bonus, you are putting yourself down about like what, four CP, two for this card, two for having to play it. So is it great? Is it really worth the effects that you see here? Um, I wouldn't say so. I'm not gonna really find it. I don't feel like I'm gonna see this card out there in competitive very often, okay? All right, next up, we've got X-Death. Um, I think this card's great, personally. Uh, it's one of the few effects. So we saw the first time, for the first time in, uh, it was an Opus 6, we saw Shuyin being the first card that would allow you to control an opponent's uh, forward, okay? So that was interesting. It did have its re some restrictions. Um, this one, on the other hand, while the restriction is that you have enough backups in order to target certain forwards and your opponent obviously have yourself or your opponent have, have to has to have a forward that you want to pick so it's pretty interesting keep in mind that this uh i guess you could say steel effect is doesn't end at the end of the turn this one stays until it's broken and if it does break it will go to the owner's break zone okay but if he has a on break effect, like when uh, when it when it's broken, let's say. Um, let me think. What card do I want to showcase for this? The break effect on a forward. Huh. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> uh, let's see. On break effect. Huh. Wow. But in to the break zone. Let's see, does it have anything like that? Doesn't have to be an exact match. <sighs> Let's see. I don't really want to pull out the ruling space in order to pull this off. Uh, let's see. No, no, no. Okay, let me try to think. What other card has... Gilgamesh. Let's go with Gilgamesh. Does it have a... There you go. 
uh, when Gilgamesh is put from the field to the break zone, you may pay X. So if you steal your opponent's Gilgamesh and you have Gilgamesh in your deck, you can actually go ahead and do that. Um, the, obviously, it won't go into your break zone if it is your opponent's Gilgamesh, but you'll be able to search out your own uh, while putting theirs into the break zone. So it's it's kind of interesting. It's kind of different. Um, I like it. It is a six drop though, so you're probably not going to put Two or three in your deck maybe two but i'm guessing more one because uh you only want to play it as maybe the fourth or fifth backup unless you really uh, there's a lot of uh three cp fours that you wanted that this meta is going to put out there that you want to steal that's going to be interesting i like the card I haven't seen too many deck well i haven't seen uh many decks at all since over seven came out what uh about a week ago <laughs> but I, I expect to see this card here and there. And it's a pretty cool card, and the art's beautiful, by the way, and also Category 5. So, And it's a wizard, so does that make a difference? No, it just gives a shout out to uh, uh, Alex uh, Hancock's, but you know, it, it's really nice. Okay. Next up, well, huh, Gilgamesh. So let's look up how many Gilgameshes we got so far. This one doesn't count, by the way, because it's, uh, you know, while it does say Gilgamesh, it needs to be the card. The only the the card name of the card needs to be Gilgamesh, not Black Turtles Lassie Gilgamesh. That, so that doesn't count for the second effect. Um, but some of the cards that we've seen in the past uh, that worked well in the Gilgamesh deck were uh, these three initially in the strongest sort Gilgamesh deck, where you had oops all fours, mostly fours in your deck, so that you would have like a 90% or above chance to actually trigger off that effect uh, in order to just break a forward. So with Brave, what you'd be able to do is you go ahead and on your turn, you would attack. After the attack is declared, you're able to uh, to uh, pitch a Gilgamesh, dole it, in order to use a special strongest sword. Love this card, by the way. Uh, in order to just straight break a forward, uh, an opposing forward. So that, that was always really cool. People use this card in combination with gold bears at the time um haven't seen it much afterwards if they were able to bounce your cards when you were playing all forwards uh it was a problem whether it was gold bears or gilgamesh was a bit of a problem where at least uh, this gilgamesh actually kind of helped you with that bounce effect problem because uh, uh this gilgamesh could not be returned to its silver sand and uh the even its special was pretty useful because not only was it an even cost for lightning so that if you play no backups, even costs are better than odd costs because well, you don't have a backup to play that odd one, so it actually costs you an extra card to do it. Um, having a bunch of Gilgamesh in your deck would be uh, you'd be able to just break forwards of uh, any cost uh, if you receive four points or, of damage or more. And this one was actually a category 13 card, so you could actually uh, go ahead and search for it with um, Mog 13-2. At the time, the only other Gilgamesh that was available was this one, so I uh, didn't see it played very much, but mostly discarded for the special. Um, this Gilgamesh was uh, quite interesting. People made decks where you're, I think I've seen uh, Fire Lightning decks. Uh, the fact that it could give itself, uh, get haste from the same element, from Lightning, was quite nice. But if you had a Shantoto or like a um, Cosmos of Chaos, something like that, you'd be able to just get whichever one you wanted. So whichever effect you wanted, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but with this Gilgamesh, if you're trying to get get it to 10,000 power, that's not going to be easy. Uh, it does start off only at 4, so to get it naturally without any other kind of, you know, Lulu or anything like that to give it plus 1,000 power, you would need 6 copies of Gilgamesh in the break zone in order to pull it off. So that's a little more difficult. Um, but uh, there's there's ways to, to go around it. So one thing that I mean it crossed my mind not to say that's a good idea or anything like that But haven't seen this guy in a while um, One of the easiest way to give a big power boost to uh, forwards is was this Kafka that used to be used in the, um, uh, Oops all four well, maybe not oops all four sec, but it used to it used as a way to break your own gold bands uh, being able to give a forward 5,000 power. So as long as you had one Gilgamesh in the break zone and use this, uh, you'll be able to get this guy up to 10,000 power 
and you can attack twice a turn, <laughs> twice a turn that turn, so that's quite effective. And when it breaks, you can go ahead and pay the X and search out your deck for for another copy of this Gilgamesh to do it all over again the following turn. So that would be cute, interesting, but uh, there's other ways to give uh, power boost, obviously, but that's one of the ways I could kind of think of it off the top of my head. So how great is this card? Love the card, lo love the art. Uh, it's beautiful in foil, actually. I think I cracked one uh, yesterday. I was going through some packs because I couldn't help myself. And let's see, can I give it, can I do it justice by showing it on stream? Well, let's take a look. Sorry, I'm gonna have to pull up the things to see if it looks good. No, nope. there we go. Well, whatever. You guys kind of see it. It's pretty nice with the with the foiling. Anyways, all right. Uh, Spaghetti Gilgamesh, as uh, Chris Adam and uh, Adam Lane like to uh, refer to it. As you can see, all the little strings and everything look like spaghetti. Cool card, cool art. Thank you, Amano, obviously for the for the great art. And uh, we'll move on to the next card. Okay, so Quarrel. So uh, saw this card as one of the uh, the few cards that they showed showcase. I think it was a like, card of the week where they uh, started showing off, uh, previewing some of the cards uh, before release, so that we get all hyped up about the set. This was one of the two monsters where they wanted to discuss the mechanic of being able to discard cards from your hand to get an effect. Uh, well, now that Turbo Discard is not around, <laughs> not going to be around in December, uh, I do expect some Dadalumas and Cactuars to kind of come up again. Maybe some Layax and uh, Quirrell would be able to just straight up break a monster of cost one or less by just discarding it. The first effect is also um, quite relevant. If you use this with the other Gilgamesh giving it 3000 power, haste, first strike, and brave, that's kind of cool, but uh, that's really up to you if you want to go in that direction or not. Uh, I kind of like it. I mean, giving it first strike and brave and haste. Let's see. If you had, if it starts at 4000, then you would need three other Gilgamesh in the break zone to make it 10k first. Uh, 10k haste, first strike, brave by breaking Quirrell on top of it. So that'd be interesting, being able to attack twice in one turn. The first strike also being relevant, just in case they put out a blocker or try to block twice. Try to block two 10,000 power fours or the same one twice in this case is not something that's easy to do most of the time. So this card, is it good? I think it's really cute. <laughs> and uh, if uh, Cactuars and uh, Dataluma come up again, uh, Lightning does have quite a few answers to, well, you know what, let's uh, pull up the card. Da, 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 Luma. Which normally is the bait of any kind of, uh, play, like, a bait of a lot of Lightning players' uh, uh, decks, because uh, some of the Lightning cards tend to uh, target as well as damage uh, opposing forwards, such as, uh, well, I'll sit in friends. You know, there you go. So if you were to target and damage, then uh, Daluma would have to would trigger twice and be able to deal up to 8,000 uh, damage to one forward. In this case, if Alcid and another damaging forward come out to try to take out Daluma, uh, you would lose Alcid and another and the other forward that comes with it for trying to take out the Daluma. So that would not be a great trade. Uh, one of the ways that people like to deal with Dalluma and Lightning would be, in my opinion, uh, four drop Odin is definitely one of them, and the other one would be, well, Dragon, being the monster version almost of uh, of uh, Odin. Okay, so moving on to the next card, Gladiator, four drop eight K standard unit, category five multi card, kind of cool. The effect. Um, it gets a little bit bigger, that's nice too, but I don't think it's going to make the cut because uh, it's, it's not really that aggressive, it's it's a little bit fair, I guess you could say. It's not like uh, really broken as a card by any means. Um, it's not unfair to play this card against an opponent, they're not going to be too scared of having to go against it, and so 
it's okay. And keep in mind that uh, while there are a lot of cards, a certain amount of cards in Opus 7 that has to cater to having a lot of summons in the deck, uh, perhaps somebody's going to make a summoner deck with a lot of summons. That'd be interesting. This card would be good against that deck, but uh, most decks only play about maybe six to nine summons. So that effect is only going to come up that often. And as a four, four CP forward, you probably have other uh, better choices. Okay, the Emperor, uh, five drop 9k, that's kind of nice. Being able to, just in case you're able to dole forwards more uh, with other abilities or effects that you're, you'll be able to do a lot of fun things. And even then, uh, the turn you play the Emperor, he'll act a little bit like uh, Shiva from Opus 3. So that'll be kind of interesting. Maybe he'll be able to be a bit of a finisher where um, you're able to edge out your opponent. They have two back, uh, two forwards that can block. You play the Emperor, you don't two of them. And uh, if they have a third forward, for example, that's that's active at the time, you'll be able to target it twice to deal uh, 3,000 damage twice. And if that, so if that third forward is a 6,000 power or less, uh, they should you should be able to break that one, dull the other two, and uh, hopefully go in for a kill. Uh, this card's kind of cool. Am I going to see that often? Maybe a one of in a deck. I don't know. But uh, there's a lot of ways to get around things, especially in Lightning when it comes to forwards. Another forward I forgot to mention back when we were discussing uh, uh, Gilgamesh is uh, Zemus. Still a great card from Opus 5. Jeez, Opus 5 has so many great cards. It's really impressive. Uh, if you play Lightning forwards, a good amount of lightning for Zemus can actually be quite good. So, uh, in, the t in, in the case for Gilgamesh, if you played out all your G Gilgameshes and you're breaking them with like Kafkas or whatever, uh, you'll be able to pay two Dol Zemus, bring back a Gilgamesh. So that's that's always quite interesting. And in the case of the Emperor, if you discard it early and you have maybe two Zemus in your deck, uh, you'll be able to go ahead, pay five Dol Zemus, bring out the Emperor, and uh, still get good use out of this effect. Okay, Dantred goes well with the Scions. It's a Scion 7th Dawn, obviously. The Scions deck was uh, quite strong in Opus 6, and uh, here it is again. Um, I kind of like it, but I don't think this Dantred is going to take the place of the other Dantred, being that this Dantred is quite amazing for the fact that uh, if you control any job scion of the seventh dog, so that's forward or backup. Other than Tancred, he gets a plus one thousand power, so that's a four drop nine k. And if you're playing the scion stack, you might be playing with uh, the majority of your backups being scion of the seventh dog. So it's quite easy to trigger this, if not for even the forwards that are scion of the seventh dog. Um, this one, on the other hand, is really good. The turn comes into play because obviously it dulls and uh, uh, the turn comes into play gets a little extra effect. For the most part, your Scions will have haste because uh, your deck should be built around... Well, it's probably built around Alize, which... Uh, oh my goodness. How do I spell that? Nope. Swing and a miss. All right. Exact match. Nope. Let's try it. Ah, I forgot what I was. Aliz. Alize. There you go. I am horrible at spelling some of these names. And if I try to say it in French, Alice. Okay, Alice. So most of your uh, uh, Silent Seventh Dawn should decks should be uh, aiming to have this backup on the field as that's one of the most. Uh, the, the reasons why the decks are so powerful, there's obviously a lot of synergy, a lot of strong cards, but being able to give your forwards haste, all of them, or the majority of them, because I think that the, most of those decks also play like Daluma, Wall, and Cecil, or something like that, but either way, uh, well, this one gives it gives itself haste, that's not the biggest problem, but after the turn after you, you actually uh, you enter the field, all it is a three drop 6k so it's nice but then again like it i would 
probably rather play the other tank instead. So in title series, it might make a splash, but in, uh, in constructed, I would probably offer the other tank crap. Okay, zapped. It refers to Ramu, so let's take a look at all the Ramu cards. And uh, I've, I've definitely watched other channels such as uh, of your returners, make a, a go over lightning. I think also the you know young team did as well, and I'll have to agree with it. Though that uh, this this card is one of the in more interesting um, Ford monsters that we got from uh, Open Seven, because Ramu is such a versatile uh, summon. There's uh, a bunch of them EX burst. Uh, this one is not EX burst, but it, it was. Quite popular. If you were playing Lightning, you would probably consider this card when putting your deck together because some of the effects were really important, such as, well, now maybe not quite as much with the fact that um, Jesper will be banned, uh, as I mentioned, the, as I discussed in the previous, in another video. Uh, this effect might not come out as much anymore, but even then, the other ones still are quite potent. The fact that you could, uh, let's see, uh, choose a forward, of course, four or less, dull it, deal an active forward, 7,000 damage. So whether you want to deal uh, a forward, if you're if the forward has 7,000 power or less, you can go ahead and just break it. Uh, if it's cost four or less and it's in your way, you could just dull it instead, like a four drop AK, for example, which a four CP AK, which is quite common to see out there, and. Even then, the, the effect of uh, being able to give a Lightning Forward that you control haste, that's good too. So there's a lot of options for this Zap to look up. And even if you want to look up at some of the other raw moves, uh, some people would have considered uh, this one as well for 1 CP being able to uh, deal 7,000 uh, damage to a damage forward. So, so I've seen, uh, I think it was at the Boston Crystal Cup, somebody used this card with Cactuar so that they were able to deal damage to a forward and then use raw move. Uh, and even when they were taking damage, for example, when a forward was coming in for damage, they would actually Cactuar and hope to actually flip over Ramu for EX Burst. That was very interesting. Um, some of the other ones, like if you were that worried about uh, early pressure, which maybe not quite as much now that Turbo Discard will uh, not be available in starting December 1st, at least not in its uh, current iteration, uh, be able to Choose a Ford of Cross 2 or less, or Monster of Cross 2 or less was definitely something to consider when uh, playing when that deck was uh, one of the major forces in the meta. And, uh, well, 4 drop Ramu, don't love it, but it's not bad. A 7,000 power uh, reduction is a big deal, and 8,000 off of EX Burst is nice too. Uh, I don't even remember what this one does. Active forward, 5,000 damage. Haven't seen it as much, but you know you have all these options with this card, so uh, it's something to consider. If you want your, if you like all the different Ramus, then this is also a card that you would consider to go along with it. If you build like a toolbox Ramu deck for some reason, uh, that's something you can do. And if you have Zemus and Zapped, uh, you could just go ahead and throw your Zapped away and then just Zemus it right back. All right, Seymour, this card I feel is freaking amazing. <laughs> it's an EX burst, it's a two drop. It puts EX, it puts summons on top of your deck, including, well, summons with EX burst. Uh, the fact that it's a summoner, category 10, uh, it does lead you to believe that it would go well with other category 10 cards like, such as, well, you know that came in the set. Uh, definitely gotta thank the uh, Hobby Japan and Square Enix for putting some of these uh, names and uh, combinations as well as synergies together. And uh, for example, in this set alone, like these two are summoners, Final Fantasy X. And uh, uh, for example, you if you have a unit in play and you play a Seymour or you get it off of EX Burst, then you can go ahead and put a summon of your choice on top of your deck, reveal it, and play it. Uh, uh, and pay the cost to cast it that turn so that's really interesting on top of the fact that as a two drop uh, backup you don't mind playing this one early mid or late game and you don't mind having three copies of it because uh, the the special effect 
is also quite relevant. So if you play Seymour and even the same turn you, you actually play it, if you have another copy of himself or and another lightning card, for example, uh, you can cast it without paying the cost. So uh, there's some really cool combos you can think of putting together for this. Um, I haven't seen some of these cards in a while, but if somebody does it, I have heard of people already being hit by that combination of, hey, look, why don't I have, I have two Seymours in my hand. Why don't I do this? Where, you know, let's play Seymour. Let's use a fish, maybe another card or like to use two like ECP to, uh, uh, and pitch another copy of Seymour to play that Raiden that I put on top of my deck for free and re remove a forward from the game and break the other one. So that's, the, the, there's some really cool combos we had with it. I look forward to seeing this card uh, out in the map. Okay. Uh, next up, Sid Privia. Uh, a little more relevant when you look at the other Privia. Okay. So Synergy is definitely of uh, category five and uh, it's, Darn expensive, I'll say, to play this card. Obviously, six cost backup is rough. You you might not want to play it first turn unless you, you're able to get the full effect off, but uh, there's some combinations to be had with it. Uh, Mid Previa being one of them to get the most value out of it, as well as, um, let's see, Fusoya. This Fusoya is another way to get a good amount of, uh, let me think, out of the field three or less played onto the field. So you'll be able to deal 5,000 damage to the fort. I'm trying to think which other lightning for, well, let's just do the thing I'm supposed to do, right? Like do the homework for you guys. Here we go. Lightning, What? whoops, gotta take that out. Lightning forwards of cost three, uh, three or less. So you'll probably want to do it for the ones that cost three. Uh, Lulu's an interesting one to put back to play if you have it. There's a decent amount of searchers as well. And uh, while well, Sid is definitely another option to have, if you pitch it earlier on, all of a sudden be able to get that Shiva like effect of uh, choosing two forwards of one controls and dulling them. Keep in mind that this is choose two forwards of one controls. You can't choose one, it's not up to two, it has to be two. So if your opponent only has one forward, one blocker, uh, in your way, this is not an effective card, so keep that in mind. And uh, you can also just break it for 2000 damage, so that's not really the effect, uh, the effect I would love, but you know, I, I guess. Oh, I, I thought the next card would have been premium, sorry. <laughs> I really got caught off guard here. <laughs> okay, so uh, next up, we got Noel, so uh, I used him in, in Sealed, it was pretty fun at the pre release. Uh, some people are trying to compare it to Eddie. Wait, gotta clear that up. There we go. Idea. They both cost six. They both will probably break a forward the turn they enter the field when you play them effectively. Idea takes a little more setup since uh, she does count uh, the lightning backups you control. But haste on the uh, but Noel on the other hand. On the other hand, will uh, who will also eventually be just a six thousand power forward, uh, will be a nine thousand power forward. That if they don't block, and he does have haste, if they don't block, then you're gonna get to pick any forward that they have and break it. So they will most likely want to block it if possible, so that you don't get a, your uh, pick of the litter. But if they don't, if they went all in and don't have any blockers, and you attack with Noel, uh, Noel and he's uh, able to get through for damage, uh, and then it's gonna be pretty good. Uh, keep in mind that the effect of breaking an, oppo an opposing forward, if you deal damage to your opponent, is only the turn he enters the field. After that, he no longer has all of this ability text, because that's only when he enters the field until the end of the turn. So. He is somewhat of a kill card, so, but uh, I don't know how much we'll see it in play. And you can search it out with uh, Mach 13-2 as he's a Final Fantasy 13 character. Okay. 
Barbara is for all those Dragoon lovers. Let's see. Dragoon. As you can see, Lightning likes Dragoons. There's a lot of them. Uh, shout out to Matthew Komodo. This card, well, a little bit on the curve. 4 drop 7k, but being able to give all your Dragoons haste is gonna be a fun time. Uh, and also the fact that any uh, job Dragoon or card named Dragoon. So that was one of the problems before too, where, uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, nope. Wrong cane. Huh. I was pretty sure there was a cane that did stuff. There you go. Job Dragoon, card named Dragoon. So that's always really good to have because a lot of the Dragoons here are actually standard units. But they are named Dragoon and standard units. So if it was just uh if it was just Job Dragoon, these ones would be affected. But it's kinda nice that uh they went through the trouble of being able to uh, uh make that distinction for everyone to be able to have the effect for all of these dragoons to have haste and also since barbara is a dragoon uh, the effect will also apply to herself all right next up flanborg i'm gonna have to read this one because that's a whole lot of text and i forgot most of it uh can become a two drop 7k if you break a forward of cost three or less your opponent controls so that's not too difficult. And having a uh, Electrax Ron. Uh, I'll break effect on top of that. What is a Electrax Ron? Oh, it's itself. Okay. That makes sense. And if it breaks, you're able to search your deck for another copy of it. Do I think I'm going to see this card often? Probably not, but a 2 draw, possibly 7k, and that when you break a. That you break an opposing forward of cost three or less that that's gonna that should happen pretty often breaking an opposing forward of cost three or less unless they play all four four cp then you know <laughs> that's that's a different issue on the other hand uh but i don't expect to see these cards too much maybe somebody is going to be able to uh figure out a way to make it a little more broken i mean obviously you get a lot of uh, a lot of value off of uh, playing this card and getting another version of itself if it were to break on top of having broken the opposing forward uh, interesting card but i haven't even begun to uh put try to put decks together that uh, include this card in it all right next up we got cannoneer uh let's see choose a f two cp backup so it's nice category five uh yeah, dealing 7,000 uh, damage to a 4 is not bad. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, you have things like uh, Fisoya, which is not lightning, but able to deal 7,000 damage one, uh, without having to break, but you take one point of damage instead. So the interesting thing with this Fisoya is that if you let a uh, forward through uh, anyways, you have taken one point of damage, so Fisoya kind of acts like a... A form of removal for uh, smaller forwards again that go against you and you could well there's this whole decks built around for so yeah i'm not gonna go over it right now but what do i think about this card i i think it's all right oh wait put cannoneer and a forward into the break zone huh okay maybe this card's not so good <laughs> unless you want to break your own forwards pretty uh pretty often which could be a thing if you play a viking deck Wait, whoops. Let's not go with that one. Play a Viking deck and you really, really want to break your own Viking because you don't need more forwards out. Normally, Viking decks tend to uh, like having multiple forwards out on the field at the same time. And uh, I don't really like this card. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the, this effect just seems like it's going to take a whole lot of work to pull off. And it's not even just a break effect, it deals 7,000 damage, so it's alright, but I don't expect to see it much. Alright, Mystic Knight, 2 drop backup, category 5. Uh, choose a damage forward, break it. That's good, kind of reminds you of, uh, what was it, Ninja? And this. Was it this one? No. This one? There you go. No, wait. Shoot. I'm trying to remember what it was. No, it was Black Mage. There you go. Goodness. I'm trying to memorize all the cards. It was 
pretty a pretty daunting task. All right, there we go. So uh, very similar, but it's a category five, so maybe that'd be a big deal in title series. And uh, well, it definitely uh, could help in sealed if needed if you had a lot of lightning in your deck. So yeah, it's kind of nice. But we haven't seen this card come up too often lately, so you can kind of gauge how better the fighting this card is by the fact that we haven't seen this card played as much lately. Alright, mid, mid Previa, we talked about this card a little bit before, uh, can deal up to 9000 damage uh, when it enters the field. So normally it enters the field, active forward takes 3000 damage, but if you bring it back from the, if you play this card from the break zone, so the other Previa is able to do that for you. So playing out this card with a mid Previa in the uh, in the break zone is going to be able to bring your backup back into, onto the field and deal 9, up to nine thousand damage to uh, Ford. So that's kind of nice. But uh, the other effects interesting as well. The fact that you're able to discard three cards to not even need Sid Previa to do this, uh, bring this card back from the uh, break zone onto the field, but only during your main phase is interesting as well, meaning that you technically don't need to play this card at all to make this card quite effective if you discarded it. So I like this card and uh, we'll have to wait and see how, what, if it's a big deal or not though. I wonder if it would have been nice, let's see. That is a field, choose one active four, 6,000. Choose one active four, 3,000. Like, it wouldn't really have broken the two Thaumaturges in one turn, it would have killed one, got your uh, a backup at the same time. Would have been interesting, but maybe not so much, okay? Lightning. I personally, I love this card. It's, I feel like it's really good. And uh, being a category 13, so if you play title series, that's huge. But the amount of forwards, well, besides herself, so I'm not gonna, whoops, there we go. The amount of forwards that, she, that you can target with it is pretty staggering. Keep in mind that if you're playing in uh, standard constructed, you won't be able to target herself. But uh, yeah, you have definitely a whole lot of uh, category 13 forwards that you can give haste to, uh, let's see, any noteworthy ones, well, let's see, Sarah, yeah, having this lightning and this Sarah, which came out in the same set, by the way, uh, giving haste to a forward that entered the field and dole two, two, uh, two enemy forwards is, or actually, Two characters, so it's not even forwards, but how often do you really want to do your opponent's uh, backups or monsters? That's really up to you. Uh, be able to dole two opposing forwards normally and give uh, give a forward haste is a pretty big deal. So if you count it, count it that way, it's uh, four CP to play Sarah and one CP because you have to dole lightning. I think that's a possibility. Haven't seen as much Ice Lightning lately, but that combination looks really interesting to play. Uh, here we go, the Ramu we talked about it a little bit earlier. This card's alright, I don't know how I feel about it that much because uh, I don't know if Lightning really needed it, but hey, you know what, like it's it's kind of cool. And if you put it out, if you have uh, maybe a copy of it and three copies of Seymour, you can pick when you put it on top of your deck. So. Uh, if you try to trigger it off EX Burst, it could work. Uh, Ramza, if you use his ability enough times, he gets to be 8,000 power, haste, brave, first strike. Uh, how relevant is that? Some people have made the, like, discuss the fact that, well, if brave and first strike were switched, it could have made a little more difference. <laughs> because, uh, uh, if you keep Ramza as a blocker, he on your turn he turns back into a 2,000 power forward, which is not always the best. Uh, keep in mind he's a knight, so there's ways to search for him, uh, and he does get bonuses from let's say, oh wow, okay, Ovelia. 
look at this. I have uh, okay. Ovelia would give her one, give him a one thousand power boost, and uh, let's see, Duke. Duke Katana is able to search out for him in the same element. That's quite nice. Uh, but if you want to use his ability effectively, discarding a card will only allow you to use one CP out of that card and you will lose a second CP. So you want to use Lightning Backups to do it. And if you use one to play him and then uh, his ability, what was it? One, two, three more times. Then unless you're able to reactivate your backups to boost him again, having Brave uh, to allow him to block the following turn, it's not going to be that useful. Obviously, there's ways to reactivate your backups from Zoo, which I'll go over some of the cards that I might have underestimated. Uh, this card being quite nice because, uh, well, you can activate all your backups, or if your opponent didn't see it coming, you'll be able to just discard it and reactivate two backups. Or even if you have Layak, for example, you play your Ramzai, you, you throw a bunch of... Uh, a lightning CP into it to get all the cool effects off of it, It'll make him a uh, 8,000 haste spray first strike, and then bam, you put a layak out, and on their turn you're able to do that again with all your lightning backups. So there's def definitely ways to use them. On top of the fact that with Zemus, you don't mind, for example, uh, using Ramza to just what he has a brave come back uh, during your during uh, your opponent's turn when they attack, go ahead and block with Ramza. And if you have a whole lot of lightning uh, backups afterwards during your turn, uh, Dole Zemus, uh, use one CP, bring back Ramza, and use three more CP to make him uh, to give him all the abilities all over again and do that again and again. That's cute combos we've, people have thought about, but we'll have to wait and see if they, if they become uh, that prominent that prominent in the meta. Okay, another Dragoon for, uh, uh, I forgot her name, shoot. <laughs> for the card that I talked about a little earlier. Uh, anyways, uh, if you paid with win CP, so not that many win cards that support Dragoons, except for maybe Ark. I have to do, Better than that, like exact match arc. Oh goodness, that's that just that many. Anyways, arc because that uh, arc is able to boost standard units by plus one thousand power, making a two drop six k. Uh, I think the effect is nice to prevent an opposing forward from blocking, but do I want to build a dragoon deck specifically with wind in mind to try to trigger off that effect? Uh, I might just play something like. Uh, Odin instead to just break the blocker instead. Okay, and that's it for lightning. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I know that these are a little more jumbled, a little bit more off the top. Uh, I do try to uh, throw these in together so that you guys are able to maybe be inspired and think of uh, another cool few deck ideas to put together for this uh, Opus 7 where the meta is going to break open a little bit. Thanks to the bans that are happening and effective December 1st for Jesper and Thaumaturge. Keep in mind that Dataluma and Cactuar, Cablanaut, uh, Star Symbol, all those cards will still be around as well as uh, Diablos and uh, Leila and Vikings. So keep those cards in mind when you put your decks together unless you want to go ham and go full aggro and just see what happens. Uh, as a reminder, when our YouTube channel for the Break Zone uh, reaches 800 subscribers thanks to our sponsor meshdeckgames.com uh, we'll be doing a giveaway and uh, whoever is the lucky winner that's drawn at random will get to pick between one of the following uh, items um, iconic masters horizon canopy uh, box amber from dominaria uh, character sleeves 60 pack of uh a uh, cactuar. Lightning plushie to go with that little backup. Or a Shiva deck box from the Toronto Crystal Cup signed by Taro Kageyama, the producer of the game. One of the producers of the game, anyways. 
So thank you, thank you for tuning in. Feel free to add comments and questions down below on the YouTube channel. This video should be up in a couple days. Uh, I'll probably be doing Twitch, which uh, will be able to clean up a little bit so that uh, it's uh, ready to upload on YouTube. It won't be on YouTube right away. It'll always be, it'll most likely be on Twitch first and available for replay for a couple days. Uh, eventually going up on their YouTube when it's cleaned up. So feel free to, uh, if you don't see this video up or some of the other videos, uh, that you know we've already shot then go ahead and check out the twitch channel for uh, anchorman 70 and you'll be able to find the videos there while we take our time to uh, pretty things up so that you can watch them in their full glory over on youtube so if you have any more questions or comments feel free to put them on our youtube channel and uh, if you have any suggestions as to what you'd like to see for our future giveaways let us know we're always open to suggestions just Nothing too crazy if possible. And uh, yeah, keep it PG. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Uh, I'll be back in a couple minutes with the uh, Water, Light, Dark, and Starter uh, review for Opus 7.